Hi, it's Carrie, the girl who's horrible at wrapping up what books she read. <laughs> so, I honest to goodness just had to go back on my channel and look and see what the last book was that I had covered because I am just bad at filming wrap up videos apparently. Even though now I'm doing this thing where it's just books I've read recently, you'd think it'd be easier. Apparently, it's not. So, I've read a bunch of books since then. The last one that I talked about was The Danish Girl. So this is going to be a review of all the books that I read in June, July, and the first couple weeks of, or the first week of August. <laughs> because, hello, that's a long time. I'm not going to go into great detail of the number of books, like, individual things about them. If I remember and I'm really passionate about the book, then I'll say more, but otherwise you're just going to get a very brief synopsis and, like, my star rating and my over overall thoughts about it. So, next book that I read after The Danish Girl, uh, apparently I finished this on June 13th, <laughs> so we've got a long way to go. It's called The Black Witch Chronicles, or it's just called The Black Witch. It's the first book in The Black Witch Chronicles. I gave it five out of five stars. This is kind of like Hogwarts, like Harry Potter set up. Um, the main girl, there's different um, types of species, different creatures that live in this world, and like she's attending school with demons and werewolves and witches and oh it's so good, it's so good. But then I'm looking and trying to find the next book in the series and the next book that was written it was a prequel as well as the third book that was written it's not even out yet it's also a prequel so you don't get to find out what happens after this book chronologically which is kind of a pain in the butt. But it was still a really good book. Like I said, five stars. I would definitely read that. I would definitely recommend that. It's written by Lori Forrest, if I didn't say that. And there's a picture up here anyway. Um, the next book is called The Nest. And it was by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. And I gave this four out of five stars. I think it's a really good um, family drama surrounding this fortune that they're going to inherit when the youngest of the siblings turns 40, I believe is what it is. And all of them have messed up and they're all sort of counting on this money coming to them, this inheritance, and how they come and support each other. I, I remember I didn't like quite how it ended because one of the siblings really gets screwed over in the deal, but he's the one that messed it up in the first place. So it's like, it's kind of a not totally satisfying ending, but I really, I did like it. There were supporting characters that really drove the story, so I'm, I'm a, a lover of characters in general, but mostly secondary characters. Like if... In any book, if the secondary characters are good, it's a good book in my in my opinion. <laughs> um, these are all audiobooks, by the way. And I say read. Yes, read. You can read an audiobook that is such a thing. It's too long to say listened to an audiobook. Like, I, people get it. It's fine. Next book that I read is called The Ghost Bride, and it's by Yang Zhi, Yang Zi Chu. I apologize. That's an Asian name that I'm not familiar with. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. I really liked it. It's about a woman who is approached to become a ghost bride for a man who's already died. And her trip to the spirit world and sort of how everything wraps up. I remember really, really loving the end of the book. <laughs> like, I really wish that would have been the main core of the story. How everything sort of wrapped up at the end of it, that relationship, because Oh my god, can you please write another book? I want to find out what happens with those two instead of, like, the progression to get to that point. I was more interested in, all right, we've reached that point, now give me a story. That's just my opinion. I would have preferred that. Otherwise, it was still a very interesting book. I did like it a lot. Very, um, the author's very good at giving you pictures, images, so you can create the scene in your mind, and it is also narrated by the author, which is great. I love it when, I love it when that happens, when authors are able to narrate their own work, because then clearly it's their writing, they're so familiar with it, way more than any other narrator would be. Next book that I read is called The Arrangement, and it's by Sarah Dunn. I gave it four out of five stars. It's about a couple who's happily married, but they're sort of curious about what would happen if they were to each give each other a sort of hall pass in the marriage. Uh, free pass to go out and sleep with someone, anyone, any number of people for like six months, I think it is. And just how 
this decision, this arrangement that they have sort of messes up what they already had and how their priorities change. And it's, for the most part, I was sort of cringy about the whole synopsis, but then the very ending of the book saved it for me because there is a sort of like letter from the one mistress in the relationship, the one partner that the husband took. Um, there's a letter from her and she's writing it to the married couple and it sort of wraps up the feelings of the entire story and like how things happened, why they did, and it's it provides the closure that I think the reader needs to sort of feel good at the end of the story. So I did enjoy that. Um, the next book that I read is called The Golem and the Genie, or Ginny. It's pronounced Genie in, in the narration. <laughs> and it's written by Helene Wecker, and I gave it three out of five stars. It's a really interesting synopsis for a story. Um, these two mythical creatures, a golem who's brought to life um, shortly before her master dies. So she's mastered less, and if you don't know what a golem is, it's like a creature made out of clay that you can bring to life, and it's your slave, it'll do things for you. Um, but she is this perfect image of a woman. She's such an advanced version of a golem that she passes as human, just out on the street in normal life. Um, and then she bumps into this genie who is freed from his lamp, I believe it's called a lamp in the book, or it might just be a fancy vase or something like that. He comes out of his bottle and he's trying to seek revenge on the magician who put him in the bottle. <laughs> These two bump into each other and they form a friendship and it's it's very, it was a very unique story. Um, there were bits of it that were hard to get through, kind of boring. It's more set up by scenery and plot as opposed to characters, although we do get quite a bit about the two characters. It's just, I don't know didn't quite strike the right note for me. That's why I got three stars out of me. Next book that I read is by Nicholas Sparks. It's called The Longest Ride, and I gave it four out of five stars. It's about a girl who is cheated on by a dumbass boy in college, and she goes to the rodeo and bumps into this guy who is um, famous for riding, but he hasn't ridden in like over a year because he was injured. Um, and she bumps into him, they fall in love. But there's also this parallel storyline of this man who has been in a car accident, this elderly man, and he is buried in a pile of snow and he's slowly dying. And as he's dying, he's being visited by the spirit of his wife is what he believes it is and what the reader's meant to believe it is. And they're sort of reliving moments of their lives, but it's the two storylines, they eventually come together and it's really interesting how that happens. Um, I definitely prefer this over The Notebook, which I've given my thoughts on previously. <laughs> it was a, I thought it was a very good story. Next book is called Crimes Against a Book Club, and it's by Kathy Cooperman. <laughs> it's about two friends who decide that in order to make extra money with their fancy rich girl friends, um, they're going to create this face cream that they claim has all of these fancy properties, all of this wonderful stuff is going to happen to your skin if you use it. And the woman who creates it, she's actually good at chemistry, and she's she decides that she has to put something in it that's going to convince the ladies that it's actually doing something. It has to have some sort of reaction when they use it, so she decides to use cocaine that was confiscated from the other girl's brother, who's an addict. She puts cocaine in the face cream so that the ladies start using it. Oh my god, it was such a funny book. <laughs> I love the dialogue. I love um, the performance. I believe this is narrated by Katherine Kelgren, who if you've never heard one of her narrations, oh my god, she is amazing at narration. And unfortunately, she has passed away, so she's no longer narrating books, obviously. But her narration style is just incredible. I love every book that she narrates. Um, she's very, very good at what she does. So I would definitely recommend that book. And just because it's a hilarious story overall. <laughs> Next book that I read is called Deception. And it's by Amanda Quick. And there's a plane going by. No, a helicopter, I think, actually. We live fairly close to three different hospitals that have helicopter pads. So that's a thing. Um, Deception by Amanda Quick. I gave it three out of five stars, but honestly, without 
without clicking on it and opening it up, I couldn't tell you much of what happened in this book. Oh, that's right. Okay, so it was about this hunt for a uh, treasure on an island that was they're looking for the map they're looking for like the secret how to find the treasure i remember being so frustrated at the end of this book i don't remember specifics but i remember this because i was so annoyed by it um they spend the whole book looking for the map looking for the treasure proof that it exists stuff like that and then we get to the end of the book and the main character the main guy he has the option of going to the island to find this treasure so like circle around and it's coming back now There's a lot of noise outside my window right now. So the main character, he spends the whole book looking for this treasure and, like, making sure that it exists and proving that it exists, and then he gets the option to go look for it on the island at the end of the book. But it's it ends with them going, no, no, you guys go off, the secondary characters, you go off and find the treasure. I'm going to stay with this woman because I love her so much. I remember thinking the beginning of it was kind of like The Mummy, it's set up like the mummy. The woman is living in her library, and she's good at book. She's good at books. Excuse me. She's really smart, very beautiful, and she almost gets sexually assaulted at the beginning of the book. Now that I'm remembering little bits of it, um, so they have this sort of like she's the basis for the research, and like he's the muscle and like the motivation to get all of this done. And they never go off to the island. There's no... It, like, in the synopsis of the book, it makes it sound like such a big adventure, like a pirate adventure. They're going to go off to the island and find the treasure. No. Nobody goes to the island. That's at the very end of the book, and we don't get to see the island at all. And that kind of upset me, because I was really looking forward to that, reading the whole thing. So, yeah. Three out of five stars. There were bits of it that were good, but at the end of it, I'm just angry, because I didn't get to see what I wanted to see. Um, next book that I read is called Shattered. And it's by Karen Robards, and I gave it three out of five stars. And again, with this one, without clicking on it, I could not tell you a single thing that it was about. And I... Ugh, the cover is kind of nondescript, too. Like, I can't even... I can't even remember what it was about. So if that tells you anything about it, forgettable. Um, but I remember when reading it that it was surprising it doesn't look like a very interesting book, but while reading it, I was very interested. But now I couldn't even tell you anything that happens in it. So sorry, no, I'm not clicking on it. That would take way too much time. Next book is called Three Fates, and it was written by Nora Roberts, and I gave this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed the characters in this book because it, the entire story circles around these three Greek statues called the Three Fates. I believe they're Greek, maybe they're Roman, I don't even know. Three silver statues. They're very old, very, very, very old, and they've been separated for many, many years. And now these three Irish siblings, two boys, one girl, they pair up with these other three strangers in a variety of circumstances, and they're trying to bring the three statues together. But there's this evil woman who is just manipulating everybody and trying to get the statues for herself and she ends up killing someone and but she's got you know a buttload of lawyers and money so she's getting out of taking the credit for killing someone she obviously blames it on somebody else and just the manipulation the deviousness of this woman i love them. i love the main antagonist in the story because she's so bad <laughs> and i love the characters like there's so many characters in the story, but it works so well. Nora Roberts is obviously a fantastic storyteller, so I would definitely recommend it. This next book, I would not recommend. I DNF'd it. It's called Strife, and it was written by Sky Corgan. Gave it one star. I am not sympathetic to the characters in this story at all. Um, if I remember correctly, it's a rich man I'm not sure why he's rich. I think he's a rock star or something like that. Like, he plays music or he he's famous for some reason. And at the beginning of the book, his manager or a good friend of his is throwing a party for him and brings in these strippers and, like, call girls, and they have a big orgy. And the main girl in the story is one of these girls who comes to the orgy because this is her new job and she's got to do a, a fabulous job, show the client, you know, a good time. And she's just like back and forth in her head the whole time. She doesn't want to do it, but she has to. And I just, I did not feel any sympathy for the character. I feel like if I read the beginning of it right, she's only 17 
or 18 maybe like she just graduated high school and she left to go to California because she wants to pursue a career in acting and she can't she doesn't want to take a retail job or a fast food job because that's not going to make the kind of money that she needs to make to maintain her lifestyle but she resorts to hooking to pay the bills and she's living in a crappy apartment with a roommate who's a drug addict and she looks down her nose at the drug addict for being a drug addict even though she's hooking and i i'm just like there are so many different ways that you could have done that that did not involve selling your body like i just oh it's cringy and it's creepy and i didn't like it at all so i stopped reading it and put it down <laughs> next book that i read is called royal rebel and I gave this three out of five stars. It's by Jenny Frame. And the I remember it's about a lesbian princess. And she... What? I don't remember the specifics of the story. She's a rebel. Okay, so she's a party girl. And they're trying to get her to settle down and take her job seriously and... There's a tragedy that happens in the story, and she's all of a sudden supposed to take on all this more responsibility and um, part of her royal role in the society. I don't remember what country she's from, um, but I remember thinking in this book there's maybe too many lesbians, <laughs> if there is such a thing in a book. I don't know. It seemed like every relationship that we're told about, um, there's a few straight romances, but or straight couples in the book, but for the most part... They're all lesbians, <laughs> which is fine. It kind of reminded me of the L word. I mean, the different pairings. I mean, I, I could see, like, um, Bette and Tina were, like, the main queen and her consort. Like, I could I could see it in there, because um, I've watched the whole show, The L Word, so I'm familiar with the characters. And the... I don't know. It's just... I, I wasn't a fan of, like, that many lesbian couples in one book. There was at least, like three or four different couples. It just felt forced, I guess. It didn't seem like a natural sort of story. I don't know. But then there's another, there's a book later on in this list that I'm going to talk about that's the same way, except with gay guys. So I don't know. Maybe it was just not the right book for me at that time. It didn't hit quite the right note, but there were parts of it that were still really good. So three out of five stars for that one. Next book I read is called Captain, and it's by Lauren Rowe. And I gave it four out of five stars, although to be honest, I don't remember the specifics of it. I just know it's a dirty romance, and the guy is called Captain because he's a Morgan brother. Or he's uh, part of the Morgan family. I think he owns a distillery or a, a bar or something like that, and he's got a whiskey bottle tattooed on his ribs. And I just, I don't remember the specifics of it. To be honest, uh, the romances tend to run together in my head after a while, unless there's stuff that really stands out, like character-wise. There must not have been anything stand out in this. Although I liked it when I got done reading it. I gave it four out of five stars, so if that tells you anything. <laughs> Next book. Next book I would definitely, definitely recommend, even though it sounds really weird in the synopsis. I, I would beg of you to give it a chance if you, if you are interested. It's called His Pretend Baby. And it's by Theodora Taylor, and I gave it five out of five stars. I was really, really surprised by how much I liked this book. It's very short. I think the audiobook is only, like, five hours long. Every single one of these has been audiobooks, by the way. I do have a couple paper, paper books, but we just haven't gotten to them on the list yet. His Pretend Baby. It's... The synopsis makes it sound so weird. This woman is dating... A very rich man but she's not the typical woman that you would see dating somebody who's in high society and in the public eye and very rich I mean, it's a stereotype like that I'm just for the purposes of this book we're supposed to believe that she's not the typical person that this guy would be dating and she's got dreadlocks and she wears lots of black and clothing with um, safety pins through it and rips and tears and short skirts and she gets pregnant by this guy. Oh no, he's not, he's not rich and famous. He's a cop. That's what it is. He's a cop. <laughs> so the guy that she's dating is a cop, very upstanding. His family is very prominent in society because the cop's brother is a billionaire tech genius. And so the cop, it, I mean, it's a family of high achievers and she's a woman who's sort of looked down on by them because she's not the typical 
person that they feel like their son should be dating. That's what it is. She gets pregnant by the cop, and the cop ends up dying in an accident or in a shootout. I don't remember exactly how he dies. But um, what happens is the billionaire tech genius um, finds out that she's pregnant. She comes to the funeral of the cop and decides to tell the family at that point, and it doesn't end well. But he's there, and he decides in his own way that the best solution to this problem is to marry the girl. The tech billionaire is going to marry the girl who's pregnant with his brother's child. <laughs> Sounds really, really weird. Then you throw into there the fact that the tech billionaire, he is on the autism spectrum. Um, I think they write in, it's in the story that he's, uh, he has Asperger's. So he's very high functioning. He's a genius when it comes to technical stuff. Um, but he doesn't do so well in social situations. Um, but the two of them end up forming a really sweet relationship. And I would highly recommend it to anybody who maybe even is just sort of on the fence about whether or not they want to read it. Just go read it. It's so good. <laughs> I was really surprised by it. I love it a lot. Next book that I read is called Angel Bound, and it's by Christina Bauer. I gave it four out of five stars. And I really like this world because there's different creatures, different species are at war with each other. Um, our main character is half demon, half human. Um, in this world, there are demons, there are angels, there are, I forget, demon hunters. I mean, it's a different mix of characters. It made total sense when I was reading it. Like, it felt very familiar. Um, and I was very excited to see that the second one is also on Audible. So I put the second one in my wish list right away. Um, but our main character is half demon, and she falls in love with a man who's a demon hunter. <laughs> so that makes for interesting storytelling. Next book that I read is called Wolf Song, and it's by TJ Klune. And I gave this four out of five stars. This is a book that reminds me so much of Twilight, but it's like the adult version of Twilight. It's much better writing from what I can remember. It's been a while since I've actually read Twilight. Um, and it is focusing not on vampires, but on werewolves. So it's a werewolf family, and this human is sort of introduced into the family and becomes close with one of the children of this family. Um, and they're gay. They're gay werewolves. Um, because the young boy, the one son of the family, I think he's 10 when the story starts, and 10 or 12 when we first are introduced to him in the story, and the human that gets introduced is 16. So there's a bit of an age difference, um, but they are just like the best of friends at the beginning of the story, and they grow up together um, just as neighbors, because they live right next to each other, and... Around the age of, I think, the older one is 23 and the younger one is like 17. I think that's the age. No, that can't be the age difference. 17 to 21, I think, is what the age difference is. Um, all of a sudden a war happens and the werewolf, the son that we're following, goes off to war because he's the alpha of the group now. And there's a shift in the emotional tone of the book. Like I said, it reminded me a lot of Twilight, like in the second book, New Moon, where the Cullen family leaves and Bella's left alone and desolate and doesn't know what to do with herself. It, it kind of had that feel to it. It definitely reminded me of that. Um, and it, it's, it ends in a happy sort of way. Like we get the closure at the end of the book that we're supposed to get, but it, it you never really get back that sort of happy emotional tone of the beginning of the book where we're watching their cute relationship sort of develop over time. It, I don't know, this book made me feel weird at the end of it, but I still was really excited to find out what exactly happened, so I did enjoy it a lot. Next book that I read is actually a paper book. I can show you one of them finally, because I don't actually read that many paper books now. It's called Blythewood. It was written by Carol Goodman, and I gave this four out of five stars. Although, to be honest, if I were to sit and think about it, I could remember more things about it. This book reminds me a lot of The Black Witch, which I talked about earlier. It's a school setting. There are many different creatures that we're introduced to. It's different world-building magic system. Um, our main character is um, revealed or is taught about this other world 
with demons and angels and creatures that they're supposed to fight using their bells and their swords <laughs> and things like that. So it was a very interesting story. It was actually a very thick book. I read this while I was camping. Um, and I did give it four out of five stars. I really want to read the other two. I have the other two in paperback. I managed to find the entire series at my local bookstore, so I have them. Um, I just haven't read them yet. And our main girl falls in love with one of these creatures called Darklings that they are supposed to, I don't know, guard the school against or guard the secrets of this. Is, oh, I can't remember the specifics of it exactly. It's hard to articulate. <laughs> It's a school where these girls are taught to protect the secrets of this world. Protect the world from demons or angels or I don't even remember exactly what it is. But I liked it when I read it. <laughs> if, that gives, if that tells you anything, I liked it when I read it. Next book that I read, I gave five out of five stars. And again, this is similar to His Pretend Baby. I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed this book. So if you're kind of on the fence of whether or not to read it, just, just read it. It's good. It's called Glitterland, and it's by Alexis Hall. And it's about a gay couple. Um, the, mas the more masculine side of their relationship, I don't like using that word, but it's just easier to describe the two of them that way because I don't remember their names. Um, he is more stiff, more formal, more proper in the way he speaks. Um, this takes place, I think, in the UK. And I don't remember exactly where these two characters are from. But the more masculine side of the relationship, the one guy, he is very proper, very prim. He speaks more clearly. Um, and he, he suffers from emotional problems. He's got depression. He's got this sort of anxiety that hangs out in his head, is telling him things. He meets this more feminine man. He's very tan, he wears glittery clothing, and he's from Essex. They say that often. I don't know the specifics of that area of the country, but apparently they're generally made fun of. That's the impression that I got in this story. I don't know. A man he would not normally bump into, and they form a really cute relationship and attachment to each other, and just the different way that the narrator voice the two characters was awesome. <laughs> I really got into the characters. Um, the setting, I think, is really well done. And it's just, it's a book that I think you're better off going into not knowing much about. It's just this sort of awkward relationship that wouldn't normally develop. Would You wouldn't think that these two characters would get along with each other because of their personalities and where they come from and what they're interested in. But it's, I think it's really, really well done, and I would highly recommend it. Next book that I read intimidated the heck out of me on my bookshelf for the longest time. <laughs> so I started reading the paper copy of it, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. I gave this four out of five stars. I started reading the paper copy, but hello, this is a hell of a thick book. It's not like Blythewood where the pages are, like, not many words on them. This is, like, I don't even remember how many, almost 650 pages, this book. And it sat on my bookshelf for the longest time. I'm just looking at it going, seriously, just dig into it. I'm sure it's wonderful. So many people talk about it. And I just, I read the first 150 pages, I think. And then it just sat next to my bed. And I didn't want to pick it up and read it because it was still such a thick book. And it had still had a whole bunch to get through. So I ended up buying the audiobook. And I think that was the better way to do it. This is a translation from the original Swedish and the names are kind of unfamiliar, and I wasn't sure how to pronounce some of them. So being able to see how they're spelled first, and then hearing somebody narrate them was, I think, the better way to go for me personally. It was a really good sort of layered mystery story. Um, we're following a man who is a journalist, and he's sort of on the outs with society right now. He's being shunned because he put out a story that he wasn't able to prove was true. And he was put in jail, and now he's trying to sort of regain his honor. And he meets up with our main girl, Lizbeth Salander, who is a genius hacker and information gatherer. And she's sort of the unconventional character. Um, she dresses all in black. She's got sort of short hair. Um, she 
isn't very curvy. She's very thin, very skinny, white, pale, and she has a photographic memory. Um, we get a very good visual image of her. She's described quite a bit in the book. And the two of these characters sort of develop a relationship, which I don't really understand in general. It's, it's kind of odd. It's unconventional. Um, but then again, the characters are unconventional. These two come together. They're trying to, first off, help the journalist regain his honor and his name. But he's on a mission from this family to, or this one man specifically, he's the head of this family, and they want to find out what happened to this one woman who disappeared 30 years ago. So it's not this 30 or 40 years ago. I don't know. 40. 40 years ago. 40 year old mystery, this head of the family, it was his granddaughter, and he's trying to find out, or maybe his niece, I don't remember exactly, trying to find out what happened to her. And so it's, it's layered. And it's a detective story, but it has enough mystery in it that it's not your traditional detective story, which I'm not really interested in in general. It was it was very good. The characters are well written. The story is interesting enough to keep your interest for long periods of time. Like I said, I, I think the narration helped because this book is hard to just sort of pick up and read big chunks of it at a time. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Um, but I really, really did like it. Um, like I said, I gave it four out of five stars. thought it was very good. Um, the next book that I read, I was not that impressed with. It was still good. And there were good, I think the end of it is what gave it the three star rating for me. That was The Cove by Ron Rash. Um, and I gave, like I said, I gave it three out of five stars. I really like the ending of the book, <laughs> if that tells you anything. It's this couple of siblings, a brother and sister, they live in the cove, and the brother, he's been injured in war, and he's getting married soon, but as soon as he gets married, he's going to want to move out and live with his wife somewhere else, because his sister is marred by a birthmark. I don't know if it's on her shoulder or her neck or something like that. She's got like a rosacea birthmark, and the entire town thinks that she's a witch because of it. This is a witch's mark. And this is shortly after this book takes place I think shortly after World War one or while World War one is still going on I think um, these two siblings living in the cove they're by themselves um, until comes the time when the brother's supposed to get married um, one day the girl is out wandering around and she bumps into this man by the river playing a pipe and he can't speak or he doesn't speak at all. He's mute. And first of all, I think it's a language barrier, and then they realize that he just doesn't, he just doesn't talk at all. He can't talk. So they bring him back to the house, let him come in, like, they befriend him, and he starts helping out on the farm in the cove. So it's a very interesting story. It ends with a twist. It ends very dramatically. It's a very shocking ending, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but for the most part, the book was very slow, very hard for me to get through. I started reading this in May, beginning of May, second week of May. I didn't finish until the end of July, and it's really not that long. So it took me quite a while to get through it. It was just a bit boring for the most part, until you get to, like, the last 20 pages where you're just like, oh my god, everything is happening all at once. And in which case, the end is very interesting, but for the most part, it was boring. But that's okay. Maybe that's just the slow build-up of the dramatic things. I'm at 33 minutes so far in this video. I feel like I'm doing a good job. Next book that I read is called Pretty Instinct, and it was by S.E. Hall. And I gave this four out of five stars. It's a dirty romance, again. This follows a man who is ditched by his fiance on the side of the road after they have an argument. And he gets picked up by the girl she's just lost the bass player in her band because she was picking on her brother who is special needs and they're sitting in the tour bus at this truck stop where they just drop the girl off and they're like all right what do we do now and this guy who got ditched by his fiance he just happens to be holding a guitar case and so they just bump into each other there's a lot of great character building in this story the characters are very well developed and i like I like that part of it. I, I thought that was really cool. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it. 
the specifics of it. I didn't like the like flowery poetic way that the guy talks to the girl and he's very respectful in that he doesn't touch her until like way after most books would. <laughs> I was a bit annoyed by that. I'm like, okay, seriously, you guys are going to sleep together. Could you just sleep together already? <laughs> but yeah, that was just me being a, a picky reader. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, I thought it was very good. Next book that I read is called Gentleman Nine. It's by Penelope Ward. I gave it four out of five stars. It's another dirty romance. Um, this one, I think, was actually the... I read this one out of order. This one was like a deal of the day that came up. And uh, basically, this girl is dumped by her boyfriend after nine years and decides that, you know, she needs... It's been a long time since they broke up. And she needs to get back out there and start seeing people again. But she doesn't want a, a new, deep, heartfelt relationship. She just wants sex for the time being. So she decides to call an escort service <laughs> and meet up with a guy randomly just to have sex. And um, during this time that she's planning this and going through this, this old crush of hers comes back into her life from when they were children. And I don't know, it's the interesting sort of love triangle that we get between the guy that just came back into her life and her boyfriend who dumped her. They were good friends as kids and they were both good friends with her. So they were, I mean, in high school, like the guys decided that they were not going to pursue her. And then the one went off to college and the one that stayed, he did pursue her. Like he went behind his friend's back. So there's that sort of drama build up in this. Um, one thing I remember that I didn't really like about it was, what was it? I wish they would have expanded more on the, the male escort thing, just because I think that's really funny. And we never got to see any of the male escort part of the story that was just like the, the funny way to draw you in and make you interested in reading the book. <laughs> but, I mean, it was, a, it was a dirty romance, so of course, you know, the main characters develop this sort of relationship, and then something happens, and it threatens that relationship, and everything sort of works out the way it's supposed to in the end, but... I mean, you, you've read them before. I've read them before. <laughs> I did think that was interesting. <laughs> I would recommend it. I think it was very good. Next book that I read is called Blackbird, and it's by Anna Carey, and I gave it four out of five stars. The reason I purchased and read this one is because I'm in my dollar store haul. I bought the second book in the series. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Deadfall? If I'm reading it right. It's like back behind my computer on the floor against the wall <laughs> trying to read the title. I think it's called Deadfall. And I didn't realize it was a sequel when I bought it, so I had to go buy book number one so I could read it. And I could be like caught up. And basically this girl wakes up on the train tracks of the subway and she doesn't know her name, she doesn't know what happened to her, why she's there, what's going on. She doesn't remember anything that happened before that. So she discovers that she's got a bag with her and she's going through her bag trying to find stuff and she finds a coin, like a quarter, taped to a piece of paper with a phone number on it, and it says, don't call the police. Um, and she's, she's spending the entire first part of this story just trying to figure out what the heck is going on and running away from the cops, and she bumps into a guy in a gas station, and he just sort of attaches himself to her because she looks like she's in distress, apparently. And you slowly learn why she's being chased by people and... That sort of a thing. It's it's a good suspense story. Um, the main characters are like 16. So, I mean, it's, it's written with that character in mind. So it's not as hardcore as some other thrillers that you might read for adults. This is more of like a high school thriller. <laughs> but it's still really good, and I can't wait to read the second book. Next book that I read is called The Questing, and it's written by Catherine Levesque. I believe that is how you say it, but it looks French, so I'm not sure. I gave this three out of five stars. I remember this is a traditional sort of medieval historical romance. It's supposed to take place in the 1200s, but I really don't think it does based on the characters that were given. Um, I feel like the woman does not act like somebody from the 1200s would act. I feel like she's way too outspoken and, I mean, it, she's a progressive character, but during that time that wouldn't really make sense. 
Um, I remember being annoyed because she's given this big elaborate necklace with a cross dangling from it and they always refer to it as a collar which just upsets me in general because hello she's not a dog but that's just the terminology that the author decided to use and during the course of this book she loses her husband and her husband dies in war and he promises he makes this other man promise to marry his wife because he wants his wife to be taken care of. So the man that's dying has a wife, says, hey, buddy, you marry my wife now, I want her to be taken care of. So he comes home from war and he marries her. And like, she's only got three months of being a widow before she's married. He's had been a widow for the man, the main man in the story, he's been widowed for three years. So he's had plenty of time to sort of come to grips with it, but she's only been widowed for three months. And she's sort of forced into this new union her and her daughter. Um, she does have like a three-year-old daughter. I remember there were just parts of this that annoyed me. In general, it was a good story though. I did not like the twist at the end of the book because the, the main man that we're following, he discovers this big secret, this big revelation at the end of the story, and he never tells her, the woman. She never finds out about it. She never learns about it. It's just sort of like, we as readers know about it, I'm righteously upset on her behalf, but she never learns about it. And that, that just upset me. Like, I feel like that would have been such great character development all across the board for her, but she never knows about it. I just, I didn't like that part of the book in particular. Um, otherwise, I mean, it's just a traditional, like I said, historical romance. You kind of know what to expect with those. Next book that I read, I gave five out of five stars. I think that's the third one for this video. <laughs> called Firebolt and it's written by Adrian Woods and as soon as I get my next Audible credit I'm buying the second one in this series because it's like Hogwarts school of dragons and dragon riders like it's a school that teaches magic that teaches dragons what they're supposed to do and teaches the dragon riders what they're supposed to do but like the dragons can take human form so like everybody's walking around as just like normal students but like half of them are dragons <laughs> It's such a cool setup. I love it. Um, the beginning of the book makes it seem kind of like cheesy YA, like maybe it wouldn't be that interesting. But as soon as they start going into the background, like dragon history, dragon rider history, and like the relationships that they, that they have with each other and the world building, I was hooked. I was instantly hooked. And I'm not a big fan of the main romance, but we're getting kind of like hints that that may change in future books just based on character development and like the different roles that these characters have so i'm excited to read on i really really want to find out what happens next <laughs> um definitely would recommend it next book that i read is called dream spell and it was by tamara lee i gave it four out of five stars this is also sort of a medieval historical fiction romance similar to the questing but way better um this is about a woman who is dying of a brain tumor it's uh fatal it's what is the word that's not the right word for it terminal that's the word it is terminal she's not going to make it treatment has not helped and she is a therapist i believe counselor of some sort and she's speaking with one of her patients who says that he woke up in a dream he dreamed himself to another time period and she thought it's she thinks it's weird she thinks it doesn't make sense at all but then all of a sudden she goes to bed and dreams herself into a different time period and this comes after a period of um, denying herself sleep sleep deprivation so <laughs> it's really interesting she dreams herself back to the 1200s and she falls in love with a knight <laughs> from the 1200s so it's it's kind of an interesting setup. The characters, like I said, are much more well-developed than the questing. I feel like the time period is more accurate. <laughs> um, the way that they would treat characters, um, the different details, I feel like were much better done. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it. The next book that I read is called The High King's Golden Tongue, and it was written by Megan Dare, and I gave it four out of five stars. And this is about a gay couple Hello. So there's one part of this book that I did not mention when I was doing my review because I just spaced. Um, interesting part of this book is that 
men and women are biological equals. So both men and women are able to carry a child, like be pregnant and give birth to a child. So for that reason, the word gay is not mentioned in the entire book, which is really refreshing. What that means is it's just understood that, sure, a man and a woman could fall in love, but also a man and a man could easily fall in love, and so could a woman and a woman. It's just normal in this world for that to happen. Um, so just wanted to clarify that, because I didn't in my original review. <laughs> um, it is a young man who is groomed his entire life to be uh, an advantageous match to someone in society, whether that be a noble or a knight or a, a king. At some point, they decide that the king, who lost his husband many years ago, I think it was four years ago, um, it's time for him to remarry. So they decide that this young man who has been groomed to be a husband to nobility is going to be the man for him. He is what they call a silver tongue. He knows more than one language, more than two. He knows a total of 14 languages, and he's one of few that knows that many. He is groomed for a total of two years, specifically to be the husband to the king. But when he's brought to court to be presented to the king as his new consort, the king rejects him because the king wanted a soldier. <laughs> so it's their slow building of a relationship, understanding why this man is a good fit for the king. <laughs> and they go on little adventures and like they go out, they do their own separate thing. I love the characters in this story. I love how the secondary characters who are close friends with the king, you know, his um, counselors, his people on his side trying to advise him, his advisors, that was the word I was looking for, how they just jab him all the time because they were all soldiers in the war growing up, or they were all soldiers training together. So the king has a line, he says something like, we should banish all people from the kingdom who make my life more difficult. And his right-hand man is like, you'd be the first one banished, sire. <laughs> or something like that. It was just so hilarious. I was laughing out loud reading this. Um, but it's it's the slow build of this relationship. It's a very slow burn of a relationship. They don't get together un officially until the end of the book. You know, circumstances and a war and duties take them elsewhere. But it's it was a very sweet story and very political. I mean, it focuses a lot on the kingdom and the world building. But I loved the characters, so I was kept interested the entire time. Next book that I read is called Want, and it's by Emma Ryder. I gave it three out of five stars. It was a weird book. I mean, it's a dirty romance, but it's weird. Um, this woman is imprisoned because her boyfriend set her up to get pulled over by the cops when she had drugs in the trunk of her car. <laughs> so she goes to prison. They find out later on that she wasn't supposed to go to prison. She was falsely imprisoned. So she's released, but now that she's spent time in jail, she can't get a job anywhere. So what does she do? She decides to form her own business as a professional cuddler. She's not a hooker. <laughs> what she does is she just lies down next to somebody and cuddles them. And they pay for this. And one of her regular clients is a professional MMA fighter. And he pays to be cuddled by her because he needs physical touch. I'm laughing because this is such a weird setup for a book. Um, but they form a relationship after he is going out on tour his last year of MMA fighting professionally. And he wants her to come along as his own personal professional cuddler when he's on tour. And they form this weird relationship and... Secrets are revealed later on, and it's it's quite dramatic, but it's, it's such an interesting couple. <laughs> Next book that I did not finish reading, and this is the second one that I've DNF'd in this video, it's called Wicked Beautiful, and it was by J.T. Geisinger. Gave it one star. If I could give it less, I would have. There's a woman who dated this guy when they were in high school, you know, lovers in high school, and... Something very traumatic happened, very awful. We don't find out what it is at the beginning part of the book. We didn't at the point that I DNF'd it. 
Um, but she goes from ugly duckling to swan. And she has plastic surgery and everything. And it's, I think it's sort of to cope with whatever trauma she went through, whatever dramatic stuff. She bumps into this guy who broke her heart and hurt her in the past. And he doesn't recognize her because she's changed her image so much. And he just sees that she's incredibly hot and wants to get with her for that reason. They're very bougie in this book. I remember being very annoyed because, like, they just drop money like it's nothing. Like, she drops $12,000 on a ticket to a charity because she might bump into him. He drops 700 reservations. He cancels 700 reservations at his restaurant so that they can spend the evening together in privacy. I'm like, no business owner would do that. Oh my god. <laughs> And it's, he fills the room with like 15 vases overflowing with white roses and just, it's obnoxious. <laughs> the amount of money that these people are throwing around. And they're flirting with each other. She's trying to get revenge on him because she recognizes him. She knows it's him who broke her heart so many years ago. She wants to get revenge on him. So it's like a John Tucker must die kind of a deal. But he doesn't know that it's her. And at the point of the book where I stopped it, they're at a party at the mayor's house. And she brought a date because she wanted to piss him off. And so she came with this misogynistic, um, I think it was an Italian guy, who just speaks about how Americans are stupid and he's the best man for her. And um, a woman should just, you know, sit still, look pretty, that type of a thing. He's very pinholed in this book. But... Um, her point was to piss off the guy that, you know, she wants to hurt in general. So she brings a date. Well, he brings a date too. And apparently he's just royally pissed off at her for bringing a date, even though he brought a date, but it's fine because she's just like his sister. I'm like, okay, double standard there. He gets so mad at her that she brought a date and that she's flirting with him and that he hauls her off into a private, quiet bedroom someplace else spanks the heck out of her, which, hello, Fifty Shades of Grey, you totally stole that from that book. Um, he hauls her off. Before he spanks her, he says, you should know you deserve this. And then spanks the crap out of her, like, hard, several times, and she's upset, angry, she can't move because he's holding her down physically, and she says, oh my god, I've never been hit like that before. Not even my father ever spanked me, which is very disturbing. And then he goes, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And her internal dialogue at that point is, well, he really did seem sorry. Oh my god, this couple, this author, this normalization of abuse and manipulation and just, no, nope, mm -mm. stopped it at that point. I can't read any more at that. You deserve it. No, 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 no. Nope, not reading it anymore. <laughs> so the next book that I read is called The Elusive Elixir, and I just finished it today. It's by Gigi Pandian, and I gave it four out of five stars. I've read the previous book in this series. I read book number one called The Accidental Alchemist, and this is apparently book number three, which I was not aware of. <laughs> Turns out I skipped right over book number two, but it still made sense. It's a woman who is hiding in plain sight as a 300-year-old alchemist. And she is trying desperately to discover the secrets of alchemy to save her friend Dorian, who is a gargoyle, and he is slowly reverting back to stone. He was placed under a spell, or he had some kind of spell placed on him that brought him to life in the first place, but now he's slowly turning back into stone, and she's trying to figure out why. Because, you know, she's good friends with him now and wants to save him. There's other characters that come back from the original story that I read, the first book. Like I said, this is book number three, so I skipped right over number two. I'm going to have to go back and read number two now. Um, but it was it's just so good to be reintroduced to these characters. They're such well-rounded, fun characters. <laughs> I like them a lot. And the book ends happy, and you find out what happens, you know, with the gargoyle, and everything kind of works out small spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
those are the books that I've read since The Danish Girl, which is a hell of a lot. I'll know three paper books, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Jump to page two. <laughs> oh my god. Twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. 30 books in one video. I think that is a new record. <laughs> so I'm going to end it here. Yeah. Um, if you have any comments about the books that I talked about, let me know in the comments down below. Um, clearly, I read audiobooks a lot. I think I'm going to change the, the account name or the channel name for my channel. I have an idea in mind, and I think I'm going to change it just for fun. Um, because, hello, I read a lot of audiobooks. I'm going to put audio in the title. <laughs> So yeah, I hope everybody's having a fabulous day, and hopefully it will not be as long between videos in the future. <laughs> I do apologize for that. Alright, I will talk to you later. Bye.